All right, so today we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how we make a sword in Warlord Sports. Thank you, my off-camera assistant. Uh, this is a, uh, what we call a measuring stick. It's upside down. That's right side up, although it may be reversed on camera. I'm not actually sure how that works. Um, but we use this for measuring things, and it's called a stick because it's made of wood and it's stick-like. But even if they're made of metal, they're still called measuring sticks as opposed to measuring metals. I don't know how that works. Okay, so we're going to make a 35-inch sword today. So we have our piece of kite spar. It's going to be our core. This is 505. I think it's 505. That could be 524. It's definitely not 602, though. It's and it's not solid. 524. Oh, it's 524, apparently. If it was solid, it would be solid, but it's not. So that's going to be our core. And this is 32 inches long. So you heard me say we're going to make a 35 inch sword, which is correct. As you can see, it's a 32 inch piece of kite spar. So the way that that's going to work, and we'll get into that more a little bit later, uh, is that once you add the pommel and you add the tip, um, it ends up being a 35 inch sword. So great. All right, so we've got our core, 524 kite spar. We've got our handily bit, which is just some gray extruded PVC. You can also use fiberglass. Uh, this is uh, a little bit over half inch inner diameter. This will fit pretty much everything. Uh, and it's got about three quarters of an inch outer diameter. So it's pretty comfortable in the hand. And this is 11 inches long. It's important to get these dimensions right because if your handle is too long, then it's not going to be legal. So you need to have the right amount of strike legal versus handling bit. Okay, so cool. We've got a handle, we've got a cord. We've also got tape. We've got lots and lots of tape. So let me go through the tape real quick. We've got strapping tape. This has got uh, longitudinally oriented uh, fiberglass strips running in through the tape itself. Uh, this is very durable. Uh, basically, will never tear or rip. Um, it's just incredibly strong tape. The downside is it's a little narrow. And it does come larger, but it's even harder to work with. Uh, it doesn't torque at all. You can't really torque this down. And uh, it's also very heavy. So what we use this for is we use this for securing uh, the joint from the handle to the core so that that won't ever come apart. OK. Indoor, outdoor, double-sided fiberglass carpet tape. Uh, this has got fiberglass weave, uh, and it's double-sided adhesive. Uh, so what we use this for is we use this uh, to prevent the stabbing tip from ever coming through to the stabbing tip foam. So the core won't be able to push through this because fiberglass is nearly indestructible for what we're doing. So you can't stab through it, it's not going to tear. This adhesive is also really aggressive, so it's really unlikely to come loose or move around or wiggle like you see with some other tapes. Packing tape. This is our other tape that we use. And uh, this is what we use for pretty much everything in the shop. Uh, this is really good uh, in dealing with cold temperatures. So it's, I think, 50 degrees in the shop right now, and I've got no concerns about using it. This can get down to as little as, uh, I think it's rated to like negative 15 degrees or something like that without the adhesive giving way. That's really important. It's a natural rubber adhesive, as opposed to some of the various other types of adhesives, and that's kind of what lets it do that. So it's very strong, it's very puncture resistant, uh, it's also very lightweight. So this is what we use to cover um, the blade, it's what we use to hold down various pieces, it's what we're going to wrap the handle with after, uh, or the handle core joint after we wrap it with the fiberglass strapping tape. So this is just kind of our all-purpose foam. All right, cool. Duct tape. Uh, we use duct tape to make the sword sting more. Okay, that's not actually true. Uh, we only use duct tape to build up core so that it fits better in the handle. We don't want there to be too much loose space in the handle, but we also don't want it to be too tight. If it's too tight, then what will happen is uh, you know, it's going to shear off uh, where it stopped bending, essentially. But So anyways, we'll get into that later, but we use the duct tape to build up this so that it fits in this more snugly. I always want a tight fit. Tighter is better to a certain extent. You see how it's kind of loose right now. And uh, I'm real bad at that, actually, so you'll get to see that later, too. Electrical tape. We use this for holding covers on, and that's just because it stretches and is mildly aesthetically pleasing. This is an awful tape that should be used for nothing that isn't largely cosmetic. So, electrical tape. Don't use it. All right, great. Foamy bits. 
This is a Dura tube. You can tell because it's kind of yellow. The starter tubes are whiter. Uh, they're even whiter than that. Uh, and the other tubes are black. So the reason I've chosen to use a Dura tube today is because we're making a tough sword, uh, and also because Dura tubes show up a lot better on camera. So there's that. This is 24 inches long, as you can see because I'm now measuring it with our measuring stick. And actually, it's not 24 inches long. It's like 23 and a quarter or something like that. Because we've done a little bit of trimming on it to get it to the right length for what we're doing here. But once we go ahead and put the stabbing tip and all the other bits on, it'll start to be a little length. So, great. This is a piece of two pound foam, and this is a three and a half or three and three quarters or something like that. 3.75 by 3.75 square. This is going to use for capping the end of the pommel. This is just two pound Durafoam. Great, we'll probably need that later. This is a piece of four pound Durafoam. And this is eh, one and a half by some other measurement. One and a half by five and just over five and a half. All right, great, awesome. This is going to go around the handle and gets taped on and it forms the basis uh, of our pommel, which we then put this over and blah, blah, blah. We'll see that when we get to it. And then last but not least, unless I've already gone over it, this is the stabbing tip foam. And this is a one inch thick piece of 2.6, I think. I don't know, something like that. 2.5. 2.5 by 2.5 inch um, Durafoam. This is two pound, one inch Durafoam. And this is going to form our stabbing tip, which goes on the end of the sword and uh, is largely soundproof. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff. All right, you're also going to need scissors. Scissors have the bi-directionally operating oriented joint there using a screw in the middle. Scissor technology was developed in the uh, mid 1200s. Actually, I'm not sure that that's true. I'm probably making that up. But when I go through and annotate this for uh, YouTube, I will definitely put in a little historical note there about when scissor technology was developed. Because, you know, scissors. A Sharpie. I'm not actually sure that you need this. Uh, I just had it sitting on the desk. So, all right. A serrated edge knife. This is for cutting foam, because cutting foam with scissors sucks, and the serrations make it real easy. I'm going to need some DAP. We need two kinds of DAP, actually. So this is original formula DAP. This is the best kind for huffing because it has the most fumes. So if you intend to get high off of your DAP, you want to stick with this. Uh, this is what we're going to use to adhere the foam to the core. And uh, I think that's all we need for, actually. And then you also need gel DAP. This is a well-loved can of gel DAP. Gel DAP does not have as much fume, so it will take you longer to get high on it, if that's your goal. So. But the reason that we use the gel dab, and we actually don't use it for much, we use it for just a little bit at the end. Uh, but the gel dab actually is a uh, much higher ratio of solids uh, to uh, solvents, which means that it dries faster and it's a lot gooier. So for the purpose we're going to use it for later, you'll see why that's important. Go away. All right, and we've also got a sword cover. This is one of our lightweight sports sword covers. It's very both swordy and covery. Oh, 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 oh. You'll want latex gloves. You don't technically need latex gloves, but you'll want latex gloves. These are the blue kind. Great. And a measuring cup. I was, I was just gonna pour it, but apparently having some kind of pouring container makes it uh, a lot less likely to make a giant fucking mess. Great. Awesome. So, sword cover. Uh, and then we need some type of cloth to put over our pommel. And this is just the old random square of black cloth, and it doesn't matter for the size. You'll see why that is later. Just make sure it's big enough to go over the pommel, then we're going to cut it down to size. Awesome. So, first step is we're going to build up the core. We need to build the core up to just under the inner diameter of the handle. Now, you want to do this in two places. You want to build up the core 
at the end, and then you also want to build it up uh, just below uh, the top of the handle. So I'm tearing my duct tape in such a way that I get a nice even strip. I'm going to start at the bottom. Make sure that I've got all the dust and crap off of it here so that it adheres properly. I want a nice even roll with no wrinkles. I'm not sure that I'm going to get a nice even roll with no wrinkles, but it is what I want. So, this is going to take me a long time because I'm very bad at this, but thankfully, due to the magic of editing, it's going to seem almost instantaneous for you guys. In the meantime, we're going to get a lot of video of me just rolling tape, checking to see if that's the right size, rolling more tape, checking to see if that's the right size, making it too large, taking tape off, checking to see if that's the right size, and being generally irritated. Checking to see if that's the right size, and it's not. It is too large. But it's not too large by much. Now, if I was really good at this, uh, what I would have done is just cleverly measured the length of tape required for each core to build up to the inside of the handle, because it's quite consistent. And we actually do that in a production environment. But I don't actually make the swords, because I'm bad at it. So, uh, that's why I'm bad at this, too. All right. It's still too large. That's fine. Just doing the thing with the stuff, trying to stupid. It's really hard to get duct tape off once you roll it on something. It always looks easier in movies, right? I mean, I don't watch a lot of movies about duct tape. I mean, if I did, uh, I expect that those movies this would be. Is that even the right place? So, really, what you're hearing now is just my inner monologue. This is what I'm thinking of myself whenever I'm doing stuff. Oh, oh, I think I've almost got it. I really think I've done this wrong somehow. All right. Oh, I've <laughs> ripped off two layers of duct tape. Excellent. Very good. Okay, that's that's better. I think. I might even do right. Like, let's try that. And that's still too large. Jesus, it's very bad. All right, let's try it again. I'm getting closer every time, which is to say that uh, it's not really working. Ah! Aha! Look at that. Got a nice, smooth fit. Now, you want your bottom piece to really be a pretty tight fit. Um, your top piece doesn't have to fit quite so tight, and, you know, shouldn't, in fact. But your bottom piece should be a nice tight fit. So, I've slid that over. Awesome. Excellent. Now, uh, I'm going to slide this up until the total core measures 33 and a half inches because we're going to add an inch of stabbing tip which will bring it to 34 uh, and then we're going to add a half inch of pommel that which bring it to 35 sorry 34 and a half and then 35 so i just slide this up here 33.5 awesome and apparently we do need that black sharpie because this is where the end of the handle goes so i'm just marking on my core there all the way around, so I don't have to measure it again. Awesome. Now, I'm going to back this off a little bit. And I'm going to wrap that tape, just like I did at the bottom. Hopefully, though, I'm going to screw it up less this time, and it will go somewhat faster. Practically speaking, don't hold your breath. So that last strip was a little longer than I needed, so... Take a shorter strip this time. also want it to be a little bit of a looser fit. And the reason that we want it to be a little bit of a looser fit, and I talked about this a little bit earlier, is because we want there to be a gradient of change in flex. Now what that means is that we don't want there to be a sudden uh, change in the flexural modulus of the core, right? So imagine that you are gripping a piece of kite spar in a vise. If you try and bend the piece of kite spar over, where is it going to break? It's going to break where it's clamped into the vise. The rest of the kite spar can't bend. Okay, so what happens is if you've got a really tight handle, it acts just like a vise, which means that the kite spar is going to break um, just above or just at the end of that, that vise, that handle. So what we do in a le leaving it a little bit of flex, a little bit of room to play and wiggle, which is uh, sometimes you hear a little bit of rattle in the, the end of World of Sports Swords, 
uh, is we allow it to keep flexing along the entire length, making it much less likely to break. So, anyways, there's that. And, let's slip this up here. Nope, still too large. Okay. So we peel off a little bit. And again, just screwing that up as much as possible. Now, I want you to just imagine that these screw-ups are for comedic effect and not because I'm incompetent. It's not true, but it makes me feel, that was too far. It makes me feel better. Anyways, all right, good. So, let's see, I've got a little bit of play there, but not much. Perfect. And I'm going to slide this up so it meets my black mark from earlier. All right, cool. I'll just check the measurement again, because measure twice cut three times, I'm not something, I don't do a lot of building. 33 and a half, awesome. All right, great, tape, 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 tape. Okay, so next comes our fiberglass strapping tape. And we're gonna cut off the little tab that comes with it, but it's not sticky. You don't want that. And what we're going to do is you can't torque this stuff down. It just doesn't really do it. So what we do is put a couple pieces like this. Running up and down. And this is going to prevent this from ripping loose or coming loose or any other sort of loosing. Make sure we got good adherence there. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Do another piece. This gives us a nice firm base on which to do the actual torque wrapping, which will hold it in place. This also prevents it from twisting, uh, since of course this is not torque. That means it can't really twist either. So it's a very firm tape once it's set. you're hearing in the background is not actually bad audio. We are in a working shop, which means we have better things to do than talk to you and make videos. Because there's actual construction by actual trained professionals going on in the background, uh, as opposed to amateur construction by me. So I actually do all the prototyping here and do all the uh, product design, and I build prototypes of everything. And then I have like actual, you know, people who know what they're doing to figure out how to make it in an efficient manner, in a consistent way, as opposed to just me typing it up until I get it right. This is what normally happens. Okay, so we completely surrounded that. Great. Now we're going to take and put a very tight wrap here to prevent it from sliding up. Another very tight wrap right here to prevent it from sliding down. If I could find the end of the tape, which I have lost. I found it. Never mind, we're good. Don't panic. Okay. And I'm just wrapping it around about one and a half times. So that it's got plenty of adhesive. All right, cool. So, really won't go anywhere. We do get a little bit of shift left and right and up and down. That's okay, we're gonna get rid of that in the next step. We're not gonna have any of that by the time that we're done. But the important thing is these fibers are reinforcing this point and it's not going anywhere. It's not gonna break. All right, we are done with the fiberglass strapping tape, at least as far as I remember. Next, we're going to torque wrap this joint. For those of you in Colorado, Washington State, or California, this is the type of joint where two things come together, as opposed to the type of joint that you need a medical license for. Okay. So, now, we're going to start down here on the handle. And we're applying a lot of torquing pressure here. That's torquing, not twerking. Not like a Miley Cyrus thing, but more of a sorting thing. And the tape should be stretching a lot when we're doing this. And we want it to be as tight as possible because we're trying to take all the slack 
out of the tape so it can't rotate in any direction. As you can see, there's a lot less rotation now, but not quite none, and we want none. So we're going to rotate it, rotate the core again, and do it in the opposite direction. So we're going to start back up here, and again, there's a lot of pressure on this tape. And if the tape snaps, what you'll get to see is me hit myself in the face with the core. That's really entertaining, uh, but hopefully it won't happen because it's kind of stimulating. It doesn't look like it happened. Good. That's great. So now what we've got is we've got this fiberglass carpet tape on the bottom, reinforcing this joint so that it can't possibly shear. Then we've got this uh, heavy duty other tape holding uh, it in place left and right. You can see we've really got no wiggle at all. It doesn't really move. It's a completely solid joint. That's fantastic. And this will last through years and years of abuse and doesn't add really much weight. So this is our core with a piece of handley bit on it. Very cool. All right, the next step is to put the pommel on. And that involves our four pound strip here from earlier. And again, this is something by, by something. I think it's like, I don't know, we'll measure and find out. It's one and a half by five and a quarter a bit, five three quarters. God damn it. Five and three quarters. That's what that is. Okay. So we're going to take our plastic tape again. We're going to start by wrapping it around a couple times. Just to get a good base layer so it won't come loose. Then we take this and we line it up so that it's just past. Turn this over so you can see here. This is going to be just past the edge of the handle. So it is not flush, but it is just over the edge of the handle. Now, if you make it just flush or below, what's going to happen is that over time, your pommel foam, which is pommel foam, which is going to be under a lot of compression, will eventually, um, it doesn't really core out, but it wears a little thin. So what happens is, you know, you could possibly fail check uh, or feel core if you need there. And that's legal in some games, it's legal, it's not legal in others, but we don't really want it to happen. So we're going to keep this just a little bit past the end here, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, just enough that your foam will be pressing on foam instead of your foam pressing on uh, uh, plastic or fiberglass. All right, cool. Now we just wrap this around. It overlaps a little bit. And I am going to hoe tape it and torque it down quite extensively. <clears throat> and again, torque wrap it all the way down onto the core. Now I'm compressing it really pretty much as much as I possibly can. And the reason that I'm doing that is because we want a grip that's going to be nice and firm for your hand uh, for years to come. So what happens is if this is squishy, if it's like a two pound foam, or if it's not a cross-linked foam, or if we just don't uh, wrap it very strenuously, and what happens is it gets squishy over time as you grip here and push on it and it wears down. If you do it this way, uh, this will last and be a real solid grip for years. It won't deform to your hand easily. It won't get squishy. You won't lose reaction time as your uh, hand has to shift through all that uh, squishy foam to get down to the handle. So the harder and firmer your grip, uh, grip is uh, and all the pieces attached to it, you know, it shaves milliseconds off of your, of your response time as your sword moves. And that, you know, can matter. But it also makes a bigger difference to just how the sword feels. So, okay, great. Next, we've got our pommel cappy bit, which is way too large, right? Like it's just, it's just comically large. And that's on purpose. So what we're going to do, do we cut the corners off these? Yes. We do? Yeah. Like at 45s or something? <laughs> I don't know how it works. Do we have a finished piece? Can you just show me? Yeah. I don't remember if we cut the corners off or not. I don't, I think. But in production, apparently we do. Dag didn't like those square pommels. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Dag doesn't like square pommels. They're actually more legal, like there's more foam, but whatever. 
Okay, so we're going to cut this into this. Now, I'm a little incompetent, so I'm going to try it anyways. All right, so just cutting them off at kind of 45, just taking off like a half inch or so. Great, awesome, little bits. I've got a trash can off camera there, so I didn't just throw that into the other. Okay, now we grab our plastic tape again. And we're going to take a strip of plastic tape. Kind of center that up. Center it up on here. And put some pretty big tension on it. Okay. And hopefully you can see what I did there. So if you can't see what I did, it's actually kind of irritating to describe. But basically, I just took a strip of plastic tape, um, about three times the size of this piece, centered it up, wrapped it over, and then stuck it down to the core. Now we're going to rotate it. The same thing over there. If I can find the end of the tape. Maybe. Oh, end of the tape. Alright. Yeah. Like that. Awesome. Cool. So, that's probably out of frame, but I'm doing the same thing I just did. But I've rotated it 90 degrees, so I'm pulling down the other edge. Excellent. See? It's kind of a parachute thing going on, right? Then I'm going to do it two more times so that I've covered all of my exposed pieces. So, grab another piece of tape. And don't worry about trying to get this exactly right because it doesn't exactly matter. The way that this is going to work is we're about to put a lot more tape on this thing anyways. So really, as long as you cover these pieces, you're gold. Ah, no, got it. That's it. Those warlord reflexes everyone talks about. Okay. And then one last piece, you can see I've got one last piece of exposed foam. I'm going to put another piece of tape over that, and that'll be the end of it. And I am trying to apply even pressure so that my pommel uh, cap doesn't get pulled off in any direction. So it kind of gets a nice even umbrella shape like this, right? And it's not perfect, but it's certainly close enough. And what we're about to do is about to fix the rest of it. So, great. Now, we find the end of our tape again. We start at the top, and we take the middle of this tape, and we put it on the edge of this foam here that started to fold over. Now, if we put it just here at the bottom, the problem that we're going to have is it's not going to uh, compress it properly, right? And it could tear and, or cut the foam using the tape. So instead, we want to make sure that we get the center of the tape overlapping the edge of the top piece of foam. And then we can press and wrap the hell out of it all the way down. Alright, cool. Let me just kind of fold that extra tape over. So, what we've got here is something you can't feel core on through the top because we've got a little bit of dead space even underneath that. That's pushing against foam, not solid. We've got a nice, solid, firm grip down here, right? And it is, I don't know, probably uh, just under two and a half inches across. Let's remember the requirement for all these games is two inches these days. So this is perfect. Very pleased with that. Look at that. Distance, right, great, fantastic. 
Okay, now we want to clean this up a little bit. As you can see, we've got kind of a mess down here. Now this is fine, it's gonna be covered by grip tape, but we wanna be clean about things. So what we do is we take a razor knife, and we start about two inches up. We wanna make sure that there's still enough that it has a good grip on the handle, but we don't want any of that excess crap. And this, we don't wanna press hard enough that we really cut into the handle so far, but we do wanna cut through all this tape. Now, don't worry too much about this having a uh, deleterious effect on the handle because relative to what we're doing, especially in the links involved and the fact that this is not really a striking surface, a little bit of scoring on this handle has no practical effect on the uh, uh, burst strength, shear strength, or whatever of PVC uh, or fiberglass or, or anything else. Now, if you're using a wood handle, uh, I would not advise that you do that because the way that wood works, of course, is now you've created a fail point for the wood. Uh, and that's unfortunate. So if you're using one of our wood handles, skip this step and just make sure you cut your tape all real nice and even when you do it the first time. Uh, you'll get right past this. So, this is really much easier when someone not me does it. Apparently it's more difficult for me because I'm a moron. Oh, there it goes. So as you can see, when I am finally capable of doing this, we end up with a real nice, clean, even uh, ring of tape there. Cool. All right, so what do we got? We've got our core, awesome. We've got our handle, awesome. We've got our pommel, awesome. And the entire thing right now should be about 34 inches long. So we measure it. Pretty much exactly 34 inches long. Good. That's great. Okay, next we're going to put on our pommel cover, which is just this random piece of black cloth that we had from earlier. And we just want to take and stretch black cloth down over the pommel. And don't be too precise with this because it doesn't matter. You really just want to cover it and then pull it tight. Okay, there. And then we take a piece of electrical tape, which again, electrical tape is awful, so never use it for any structural surface. All right. It's fine for holding down cloth. It's fine if you like it for decorative purposes, although you're wrong, but uh, never use it on the blade of your sword, never use it to hold anything down, which is load bearing, blah, blah, blah. All right, so we put our pommel cover on and then we went ahead and put a wrap of electrical tape to tape it down. And then we went and trimmed off all the excess here with our scissors, which you missed because the camera cut out and I'm not recording it because I'm lazy. But basically, you just wanna cut this off and make sure that there's no excess uh, little lumps of cloth here. Just trim them down. And we're gonna take the electrical tape again, and we're just gonna put another wrap, oops, starting at the top. And then we're just gonna wrap it down just to cover that up so we don't have any loose ends, okay? This is all gonna get covered in grip tape, not a huge deal, but just for appearance's sake and final finish of the weapon. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and put the blade on. And before we put the blade on, we need to cap this with some tape. You see how this is hollow? Well, we don't want this catching or tearing uh, on the inside of the foam, and we don't want any glue going down the center of it. So I'm just gonna cap this with a piece of duct tape. We don't wanna use a very big piece of duct tape, just enough so that we close that hole up good and solid. All right, cool, nothing special. Let me go ahead and trim the dog ears off here, but you don't have to. Okay, so what we need to do in order to put the blade on is we need to get our original gel dap, or sorry, our original formula dap, not the gel dap. Grab this here. And you'd always want to stir this before using it, but I'm going to assume it's already been stirred. 
Uh, you want to make sure that your damp is uh, being used above 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not currently that temperature in the shop, but for what we're doing, it's not going to be super important because we're going to let it set for a long time. So, got our trusty Dura tube. We're going to take our little measury cuppy dealy here. I'm going to stand because this makes this easier. Dip some of this in. And we want to get this about a third of the way full. Okay. Now, we're going to determine which end we want to be the tip. We're going to pour the glue in the opposite end, so the end that's going to be closest to the pommel. It doesn't really make a difference typically, but you might as well check. Now, I'm pouring this dab into the center hole, and I'm trying to get it all down the center. I'm doing it reasonably slowly. And I'm making sure to kind of spread it around so it gets on all the sides. Okay, so I've poured that in. So scrape off the excess here. Set that aside. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my capped core. I'm going to slide it in. And as I slide it in, I'm going to rotate it. And I'm not moving very fast. I'm just kind of rotating it and pushing it slowly. And I'm holding this parallel so that the dap won't run out the end as I do this. It will run out the end eventually, and that's fine. But the reason that I'm rotating this as I push it in is twofold. First of all, it makes it much easier to get it down the center than if I just tried to shove it. Second, as I rotate it, I'm spreading out the dap along the inside of the foam, <coughs> which is going to give us a much better uh, coverage and a much better bond. So sliding this in, working it all the way down here, and I'm going to put it all the way down to there. And you can see that the dap has started coming out the end there and squirting everywhere. That's not a problem. If I was real concerned about that, just do it like this over the can, and the excess dap just goes back in. We definitely want this to happen. We definitely want there to be excess dap. If there's not excess dap, we don't know that we really got enough in there. So the excess dap is our signal that we have enough dap in the blade. Okay. Awesome. And again, any excess dap I have, just going to scrape up. Okay. Now at this point, the blade is too long for the core. That's fine. We don't actually want to cut the blade down before we put it onto the core, because if we're wrong, it's going to be very difficult to get that uh, fixed, right, to add more to it. So instead, we just put it on, we let it be too long, then we measure and cut it down. So in case the foam stretches as we're putting it on the core or whatnot, it's not going to mess up our entire production process. So we put the blade on, and then we're going to cut off the excess. All right. So now this needs to set. And this needs to set for a minimum of 24 hours before we do anything with it. If it's very cold, it may need to set for 48 or you know, uh, even longer. But at a minimum, even in the perfect conditions, you let this set for 24 hours. You put it up, you stand it upright against a wall, whatever you do with it, and you just leave it. Because it's going to take that long for the uh, dap to actually set in this mostly closed environment. So I'm going to go ahead and swap this out with another sword that has already been through this process, if I can find one. I'll be right back. OK, so we're back, and I successfully found a sword that has already been through the drying process. You can see it's pretty much identical. Okay. What we did is we cut this down uh, so that we only have uh, about 1 16th or actually about an eighth of an inch of foam above the end of the core. So the actual core on this weapon ends right about here. And then we've got some space. And what we've already done is we've already filled in this tip with gel dap. Okay? So what we do is we take the gel dap and we put it on a piece of foam or use our finger and a latex glove and we fill this uh, space up. Uh, what that does is it's going to dry and it's going to create a uh, rubber plug that helps hold the tip in and helps keep the foam from deforming or help stab through. So it really uh, gives us sort of an extra safety layer there and you can definitely see that after it dries it forms a very solid rubber plug there. Okay. So the next step 
is we're going to put on our stab tip. And for that, we need our indoor-outdoor double-sided fiberglass carpet tape. And we're going to cut two pieces, about three inches long each. And for this, we're actually going to use a razor knife, because if we use scissors, it will ruin your scissors in pretty short order. So we take our first piece, and we want to lay it so that it overlaps the center hole, but also overlaps the far edges, okay? And then we're just going to push the excess down over the outside so that it overlaps at the corners here and on the far side. Okay? Then we're going to take and we're going to peel the sticky back off. And we're just going to use that sticky back to press this down, make sure we've got a nice firm seal. You can see that covers um, about three quarters of the tip and it overlaps the hole um, by maybe an eighth of an inch. All right, great. We're going to cut another piece, same length, same thing. We're going to overlap it just like we did this piece by laying it against the edge and it's going to overlap the other piece of tape. And again, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, we peel the sticky back off and press down to make sure we've got a nice firm seal. So now what we've got, what you can see here, is we've got two layers of fiberglass uh, tape, double-sided fiberglass tape that overlap in the center. So one of the pieces ends here and the other piece ends here. So about two thirds, and more importantly, the two thirds in the center where the core would come through, overlap and have double layer of this fiberglass carpet tape. Now this stuff is really strong. From a puncture standpoint, it's almost completely impervious for what we're doing. So between that and the rubber plug below it, it's really very tough. It's very unlikely that it's ever going to stab through, which means that we get a nice long lasting stab tip since the core, uh, the, the kite spar, can't sort of mechanically tear at the stabbing foam and eat it. Okay, so awesome. We take our stab tip, which is again just a two and a half by two and a half piece of foam. We start at the edge here and we just lay it. And you can reposition it if you need to because uh, this stuff is pretty forgiving. You can see we overlaid it there. Nice firm grip. And this is square, and this is, uh, what is this, got eight sides, this is an octagon. All right, so we'd like to make the square into an octagon. This is where our serrated knife comes in. Just lay this flat, and just trim these corners off. Very easy. Now you want to make sure that you're cutting straight down instead of cutting at an angle in either direction. If you cut in, you'll end up with a stab tip that's illegal cut out, you'll end up with a stab tip that's a little bit larger. That's not really a problem, but it looks a little strange, so just cut straight down. Awesome, except that won't let go. Other than it won't let go, it's pretty good. Okay, so that's what we end up with there. We've got this fiberglass carpet tape. We've got our foam uh, for our stab tip. And this stab tip foam is what we use in all of our weapons. Um, even if we're making uh, light swords using uh, other tubes, we still use the DuraFoam stab tip because this DuraFoam is a lot more uh, durable than uh, the other foam and, and it doesn't weigh that much more in the quantity that we're using here. So from a stabbing perspective, you're better off using this because uh, this is just going to last you through the life of the sword pretty much from a stabbing perspective. So. If you're making stabbing tips, I highly recommend that you use this method. This method is very safe. It's very reliable. You're not going to hurt anyone with this. It's not going to wear out. You're going to see the sword wear out from here to here before this ever has any problems. And that's very important. Stabs are 
mechanically uh, the most powerful thing that we do. Uh, and other than cracking somebody with the handle or you know, hitting someone in the eye or something, stabbing is uh, the most potentially dangerous. Now, I mean, potentially dangerous in, in Amp Guard and Bellagarth and Dagahir and other film fighting isn't a big deal, right? You get little core-shaped bruises or you know, maybe you break the skin a little bit. It's not that huge of a deal, but let's avoid that as much as possible by just building stabbing tips in safe, useful ways like this. So, all right, next, we're gonna go ahead and put tape over the blade. We put tape over all of our weapons, uh, unless otherwise noted. You don't technically have to put tape over the Durafoam uh, in order for it to have a long, happy life, but it certainly helps hold the stab tip on, and uh, it certainly does still prolong the life of the foam. So we're going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to take our other tape, we're going to start at the base here, we're going to overlap it just a little bit. You can see I overlapped it about a quarter of an inch past the end. I'm smoothing it on. And I've started by putting one piece of tape uh, longitudinally along the seam in the foam. If there is any weak spots in the foam, it's going to be at the seam, so we make sure that there's a good piece of tape covering it. Uh, so if it does have any problems or any shifting, uh, we minimize the odds of that shortening the life of our sword. I'm not really putting any tension on this, I'm just keeping it taut, right? It's not hoe taped down or anything like that, it's, it's really just taut and firm, and forming a nice skin on the sword. We call this skinning the sword. So we're going to come down, we're going to overlap uh, this piece, we take it over the top here, I'm putting, I'm putting just a little bit of tension on it just to get a nice firm skin. You can see how it's bending just a little bit, but not too much up there. And do, 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 do. Again, it comes down the other side where that seam is, so we're reinforcing that. If we are gonna have any problems, this will eliminate them. And again, I'm allowing for about a quarter inch of overlap of the tape down here at the base, so I can just fold it over. Okay, great. Now we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. So we've done one side, come down the other. I'm going to rotate it and do this side, which is one of the flats here. And obviously, this is an omni blade; it's not technically flat, um, but it is the other flat sides. It's not one of the uh, smaller cut angles. So again, same thing. I'm allowing for a quarter inch overlap at the base. Nice taut skin all the way up. Smooth it down. Come over the top. And just a little bit of tension to give us a nice smooth surface. Now you want this smooth surface because any irregularities in the tape are going to transfer themselves to the foam. And over time, what you'll see is wrinkles in foam, uh, wrinkles in the tape, cause pressure invariances in the foam. So if I have big creases in this tape, that's gonna create an uneven stress in the foam underneath, and uneven stresses are actually what cause foam to tear. So if you're uh, not putting the tape on properly, or if you're not spreading out that force evenly, which is what the skin of the tape does for the foam, uh, then it's actually going to exacerbate the uh, uh, destruction of the foam instead of prolong the life. So make sure that we're putting on nice, even layers of tape. Okay, so now we've got uh, four sides covered, right? One, two, three, four. So we're gonna rotate it 45 degrees and we're gonna go up these smaller cut angles and we're gonna make sure that the tape overlaps evenly. So same thing that we did before. I'm gonna get about a quarter inch of overlap. And I'm holding it, uh, I held it taut up there and I'm just gonna make sure that I'm getting a nice, even skin. Smoothing it out here. If you do end up with any minor wrinkles here, you can kinda of just run your fingers over them and work them out, and that'll be okay. Especially in the second place, or the second pass, where most of this is overlapping, it's not quite as critical as the first time. So, okay. 
and then we're going to come down and down the other side. Apply some tension to keep it taut. And smooth it out. And that is a nice, good, even tape job there. All right. Again, a bit of overlap there. So now I'm just going back and making sure that this is all sticking together. All applying nice, even pressure to make sure the tape sets. All right, so I rotate it. And again, this is the last piece that we're going to do. So we're going to go up this edge, which doesn't have any tape on it yet. Come down and put the uh, tape on the final side with no tape on it. About a quarter inch of overlap. down the other side. So now I've got this whole thing skinned in tape. This is really going to help prolong the life, right? So what we want to do now is we want to make sure that in the case that the sword is exposed to prolonged wetness or maybe very cold temperatures or uh, maybe lots and lots of humidity, we, we just want to make sure that the tape is not going to come off. So the way that we do that is we put a ring around the bottom. And again, I'm not hose taping this. There's tension on it, but it's not a lot. I'm not tremendously deforming the foam underneath. And I'm wrapping this around twice. So it goes over itself and covers itself 100%. Okay, this will keep the tape from rolling up from the bottom. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do that in two more places. We're going to do that two-thirds of the way up the sword, right here. Now this is the sweet spot. This is where a lot of your sword strikes are actually going to hit. And as a result, the tape is going to do a lot of flexing right here. So this, again, not really deforming the foam. You can see it pulls in the edges a little bit, but it's not, not shrinking that foam. Um, it helps keep the tape from puffing out because this is going to be subject to a lot of repeated stress and a lot of repeated flexing. Okay. Now we want to put one more piece up around the top here to help reinforce the joint between uh, the stab tip foam and the body of the blade. We've already got that held on with double-sided fiberglass carbon tape, which is great stuff, right? And we've got it held on with the downward pressure from the tape going over on all of these sides. But this gives it some more hoop strength, uh, and it just prevents it from ever shearing off from a pre repeated strike to the side. And again, not hoe taping this, I'm not compressing the foam. because again, we don't want to put uh, uneven pressure on it. I'm really just reinforcing it from the sides. Okay. I'm just going to run my hands over this, make sure that all of this tape is good and sealed. All right. So at this point, we've got the pommel, we've got the handle, we've got the blade. Okay, so the next step is to put the cover on, uh, and then we're going to put the grip tape on. So, our cover, and in this case we're using a gray cover. This is uh, one of our sport covers, it's not one of our normal ones. This is a uh, lighter but more durable cloth, um, so it actually holds up real well and it, it weighs a little bit less than our, our normal covers, um, making the sword a little bit lighter above your hand, which can be helpful. Take the sword, and we're just going to slide the cover on. If I could manage that. Okay. And we want to pull the cover pretty tight. 
We want to take all the excess slack out of the cover, but we don't want to have too much tension up here. If we've got too much tension up here, it's going to start to wear out uh, the cloth. So after we pull it tight, kind of let it go a little bit, and then just gather it back in a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to take our electrical tape. And we've got all this excess down here. It's great. And we want to make sure that this isn't this isn't twisted or rotated. We want to make sure this is a nice straight pull. Because if it's twisted or rotated, then what happens is it can untwist and it ends up being longer, which essentially makes the cover longer and we'll end up with the cover hanging off the end and being floppy, which we don't want. It's very, very sloppy looking. So we've got our cover on. All right, looks pretty good so far. Not too much tension up here. We're not pulling on these stitches. We're not wearing out the cloth. Good, all right. We've got our one wrap of electrical tape. We've got all this excess here. Now technically at this point, you know, your sword is, is legal. Um, but what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and cut off this excess. just like we did with the pommel, which you didn't get to see because the uh, camera ran out of batteries. So we're just going to cut off all of this excess down here. And throw that away. So we've got that excess cut off. We're going to take our electrical tape and we're going to wrap that again. just so that we cover up all the cloth. All right, not bad, right? So if you don't like grip tape, and you're happy with this, at this point this is done, but uh, we always put grip tape on our swords. It looks better, provides a better, uh, obviously, grip, more professional, finished appearance. So we're gonna go ahead and put grip tape on it, which I need to go grab, so hang on. ran away. All right, very exciting. So I've got grip tape here, and this grip tape is black because uh, that's what we ordered this time around. So, great. Start at the top. We're gonna spiral wrap it, overlapping it by about 50% as we go down and we're gonna try and pull it taut so we don't get any wrinkles. We don't want any wrinkles in this because any wrinkles in the grip tape are gonna wear holes in your gloves uh, or your hands. So you want really smooth grip tape on the handle. And just going down here and I'm going to completely cover all of the electrical tape. Okay, now I'm going to start at the bottom, do a wrap around, and then go up. So there's two layers of grip tape here. And the reason that we do that is because if you have just one layer of grip tape going in just one direction, uh, it's actually possible for, over time, the grip tape will pull away from the handle because uh, the resin in the tape is a little shifty, right? And it's designed to be that way, and it's not a problem, but we just don't want that to happen. So this is actually the recommended use uh, for grip tape when you're grip taping things. We go all the way back to the top, and then we go around again, and we just tear the grip tape off. And what you can see is that we've got a real nice waffle sort of diamond pattern in here where it overlaps. That's great, it gives some extra texture to the handle, and it looks nice. Um, but that's, the, that's what you're going for. So, check for any loose threads, check for any problems, check for any wiggle in the handle. No? Good. Okay, everything's well connected. Excellent. The sword is ready to go. Let's go ahead and check and see how long it came out. Okay, by setting it like this. And this is the length that we're looking for. All right, good. Stabbing tip is good, all of that. All right. Look at that, 36 tough. Someone will probably end up with this sword. Awesome.
Well, thanks very much. Uh, all of these materials are available at warlordsports.com. You can get your pipe bar, you get your handle, you can get all your shield, uh, uh, sorry, all of your sword foam that you needed, dura tubes, other tubes, whatever. The process for making all of these swords is basically the same, uh, at least for the you know 30 whatever swords. For the 48 inch swords or for the 50 inch swords, uh, we use two tubes instead of one, but they go on in exactly the same method. Uh, and there's just a joint in the middle that we reinforce. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. But anyways, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to contact us either here or at sales at warlordsports.com.